Hi, I'm Eric Siegel with Eric'sTrains.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new O-scale diesel model from Lionel, the gigantic Union Pacific DD35A. Lionel first offered the DD35A in their 2010 Volume 2 catalog, and then it was finally delivered in late 2011. Now, this is a new model for Lionel. They've never done the DD35A before, to my knowledge. And this is a fairly rare model to see in O scale. Now, MTH has done a model of the DD40AX, which is related to the DD35A, but it's not the same. The DD35A is sort of the predecessor to the DD40AX, with the DD35A being made in the mid-60s, and then the DD40X being made in the late 60s, early 70s. Most of the DD35As were manufactured by EMD around 1965. They were made exclusively for the Union Pacific, and they ended up making 15 of them in total, number 70 through 84. As you can see, it's a gigantic engine. The real ones were over 88 feet in length and had a horsepower rating of 5,000. Basically what they were was two EMD GP35s on a single frame riding on two four-axle trucks. Now, when they first started in service, they weren't quite reliable, they weren't so good, but once they worked out all the kinks, they ended up being fairly successful, and they remained in revenue service all the way up until the early 80s. Lionel's rendition of the DD35A is very nicely done, although it's not 100% accurate to the prototype. If you were to look at images of the original UP72 and compare them to this model, you would notice some differences. There are some items that were on UP72 that are not on this model, and there were some items that were not on UP72 that are present on this model. Now, initially, my reaction to these differences was disappointment. I thought maybe Lionel was cutting corners or that they just made some mistakes, but it's not quite that simple. What I found when I did some more research into the DD35As was that of the 15 road numbers that were made for the Union Pacific, every road number had subtle differences, so none of them were exactly identical. But since Lionel was making three road numbers of this model, they had to find some common ground to make a cost-effective model. And it's not cost-effective to make road number-specific details for each unit. So what they did is they sort of combined everything into one generalized DD35A, that kind of captures the essence of the engine, but it is missing some of those road number specific details. So if you compare photos, you're gonna see some differences. I don't have a big problem with that, but if you're one of those people that gets bent out of shape about prototypical differences, you may have a couple issues with this model. Now, when I go through the details in just a minute, I will point out those differences so you can see what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and get started. The underside of the engine is all die cast metal. Up on the pilot, we've got separately applied hoses as well as a coupler cut bar. The steps here may look pretty funny, but that's actually how they looked on the real DD35A. They were more like ladders than steps, and so this is pretty accurate. Here's a look at the die cast trucks. They're pretty nicely done, although they're not the most detailed trucks I've ever seen. There's a lot of cast in detail that would have been nicer if it were separately applied. But overall, they look pretty good. And keep in mind that on the real DD35As, those trucks were not exactly the most pretty things in the world either. So they're not super fancy, but overall, they did an okay job with them. The fuel tank area is also nicely done. My favorite part about the fuel tank is that it has this nice curve to it, just like on the prototype. And this area up here is fairly accurate to the prototype as well. And you've got some hand-painted details right here. Up on top, we've got metal handrails and safety chains, separately applied grab irons and windshield wipers. We've got safety tread on the walkways and drainage holes in the steps. Inside the cab, there are two crew figures and there are two doors on the cab. The front one opens and the rear one does not. There are a few key differences between the cab on this model and the cab of the real DD35As. First of all, on some of the DD35As, there was a strobe light up on top of the cab, but it's missing from this model. But that's not necessarily 100% incorrect, because while some of the DD35As had the strobe light, other ones did not. So depending on which one Lionel was modeling this after, it may or may not have had the strobe light. So leaving it off is not necessarily wrong. Another difference is around the windows. On all of the photos of the DD35As I could find, there was a sunscreen and windscreens around the windows, and they're absent on this model. I'm not sure why Lionel did that. It was either a mistake, or maybe they had some prototypical precedent for leaving them off. But for whatever reason, they're not on there. And finally, if you look at this writing right here, on some of the DD35As, it said, we can handle it, and on others, it said, dependable transportation. Now, 
On the original 72, I believe it said we can handle it, but on other numbers, it said dependable transportation. So just like the strobe light, this may be inaccurate for this particular road number, but for the DD35A series as a whole, it's believable because this was on some of the DD35As. Now keep in mind that with all three of the differences that I just showed you, the picture of the engine that Lionel had in the 2010 Volume 2 catalog had all of these features exactly like you see here. So it's not as if they advertised one thing and delivered another. This is how they intended to make it from the get-go. Two of the big trademark features of the DD35A engines are on this model. The first one being the dual smokestacks. You've actually got two operating smoke units on this model. And then you've also got the trademark walkway between the two sides of the engine, which is really cool. Up here you've got a whole bunch of fans, and each fan has separately applied blades in it. And then to access the controls for the engine, you pop off both of these panels like that. And right here you've got the volume, the run program switch, and the Odyssey speed control on-off switch. And then you've got the smoke control switches, and you've actually got an on-off switch for each of the two smoke units. And then over here you've got the soundboard and the battery compartment. Another key difference between this model and the prototype can be found right here along the handrail towards the rear of the engine. If you look at photos of the old DD35As, on some of the engines you'll see these large five-sided pentagon looking tank structures right here along the walkway. Those were sand tanks and they were added to the engines later to correct problems that they were having with the internal sand tanks. And so depending on which number you're looking at and when the photo was taken, those tanks may or may not be there. And obviously the version that Lionel based this on did not have those tanks and so they're not present on this model. Here's a look at the back of the engine. You've got some separately applied grab irons going up right here as well as some lift rings. And then you've got the backup light right here. Now, other than that, it looks pretty plain back here, but that's okay because on the original DD35As, the back of those engines was pretty boring as well. On the inside, this is your basic Legacy diesel. You've got two flywheel motors, the Legacy Command System, and Rail Sounds 5. You can operate this engine with either the Legacy Remote, the Classic TMCC Remote, or conventionally, although to get the most features out of the engine, you want to operate it with the Legacy System. The lighting features on this engine are pretty standard. You've got a lighted cab interior, illuminated number boards on the front of the engine, and then a headlight on the front and a headlight on the back. There are no ditch lights on this engine, but that's prototypical because engines back then didn't have ditch lights. The only disappointment with the lighting features is that in the catalog, Lionel said this would have operating marker lights, but this model does not have the operating marker lights. Here's a look at the underside of one of the trucks. You've got two pickup rollers on each truck and four axles for a total of eight wheels on each truck. Now that may lead you to think that this is going to be a really big puller compared to other Lionel diesels, but that's not really the case because only four of these wheels are drive wheels. You've got traction tires on these two wheels. These two wheel sets are free spinning and this one is what is called a blind wheel set. It does not have flanges. The reason it doesn't have flanges is because the engine is so long that if you had flanges on all four wheel sets, the engine would not be able to take the tight turns that are typically associated with a lot of O-gauge layouts. So by leaving this wheel set blind, it allows you to run this engine on curves as low as 042. Okay, the last thing I want to do before we start this engine up is to give you some raw stats on the engine. The length of the engine itself is about 21 and a half inches. With the couplers, it's about 23 inches. It weighs 6 pounds, 6 ounces, and it's got about 2 pounds, 2 ounces of pulling power. That's a little more pulling power than you're going to see from most other Lionel diesels. The reason being not because of the motors or the drive wheels, but because of the extra length and weight of the engine. And then finally, the minimum curve you can run this engine on is 042. However, the minimum recommended curve from Lionel is 054. All right, I'm about ready to start this engine up. Now, in something of a departure from the norm for me, I'm going to be running this engine with some passenger cars today because some of you guys have emailed me and asked me why I don't run passenger trains very often. The main reason for that is just that I don't have a lot of passenger cars. And the main reason for that is because my layout is primarily a freight layout and passenger cars are not normally high up on the priority list of things for me to buy. But it just so happens that I do have a Union Pacific passenger set, so that's what I'll be running behind this engine today. Now, I'm not sure if the DD35As ever actually hauled passenger trains. Most of the pictures I've seen, they were hauling freight. But hey, this is my layout. And for those of you who get all bent out of shape about things not being prototypical, 
It'll be okay. Just take a deep breath. Now, ironically, these passenger cars are made by MTH, and they were offered in a set a few years ago that was a dealer appreciation set featuring MTH's version of the Union Pacific DD40AX, which, as I said earlier in this video, was the sort of a more evolved version of the DD35A. So I think it's somewhat fitting that I'm going to be running those passenger cars with the DD35A today. Anyway, let's go ahead and start it up. Dispatcher here. Do you copy? Over. Roger that. Please start her up and stand by for track orders. Copy that, dispatcher. We'll get up and running. Out. <laughs> Okay, I like the sound of this engine. It's got a nice drone to it, kind of this cyclical heartbeat kind of sound. I really like it. Here's what the horn sounds like. And here's the bell. And here's some of the crew talk. Okay, now let's move it out. Now this engine, like most recent Lionel engines with Legacy, has what's called sequence control. And when you activate it, it sort of takes over the sound effects and plays the proper sound effect for whatever it is the engine's doing. To activate it, you hold down the AUX1 key until you hear this ding ding toot sound. So let's do that. All right, there it is. So let's move it out and it'll play the sounds automatically. So that about wraps it up for this review. This is a really nice engine and a great addition to Lionel's diesel fleet. This engine comes in three different road numbers. The numbers 70 and 72 are powered units like this one, and they retail for right around $600. And then the number 80 is a non-powered unit, which retails for right at $440. Now, because the non-powered unit is $440, which is a little high, I'm guessing that it's a really nice non-powered unit with smoke units and lights and so forth. So that's why it's a little higher than your typical non-powered diesel. Now, keep in mind that if you go through a good Lionel dealer, you'll probably get a little bit of a discount off those retail prices. And if you're looking for a good Lionel dealer, try today's sponsor, which is Legacy Station. That's where I bought this engine and where I buy a lot of my other engines and trains. You can get to them on the web at www.legacystation.com or you can give them a call at 770-339-7780. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Eric Siegel, and I'll see you next time.